It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 200. And of course, today, the conversation is all about the iPhone. iOS 4, which came out yesterday. iPhone 4, which is actually already coming out today. Details on that and a lot more coming up with Frederick Van Johnson, Alex Lindsay, and Andy Anako on Mac Break Weekly. Next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 200, recorded June 22nd, 2010. Shunned. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle. Get some cash for a new iPhone when you sell your old one at gazelle.com slash iPhone. And by GoToMeeting. Reduce costs, improve efficiencies, and help your company's bottom line with GoToMeeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, episode 200. How did this happen? Joining me now around the table, Frederick Van Johnson. Hello, Frederick. Hello. He's Hello. on a high old PR40 with custom pop filter, <laughs> which you could see I lack. Also joining us on his new ER40, Mr. Andy <laughs> and Notco. Hello, Andrew. Yes, I feel more professional now, although with this much presence on the microphone, I almost feel as though I need to take down my own enthusiasm level. You sound so NPR. And well, we're going into the soft hits right now. <laughs> and now in a in a dingy motel room somewhere in the South I'm, Bay. It's, I'm, I'm actually in the San Jose Convention Center. Uh, Salesforce <laughs> is doing their new chatter launch, which is kind of their Facebook for business. And uh, we're streaming it right now upstairs. And I found a quiet place that I can uh, that I can do this while we're while the other guys are actually doing some work. Okay, you do sound like you're at the bottom of a salt mine because everybody else has a PR40 and you have just I a know. headset. I have some serious mic envy. <laughs> really, really, with the background and the audio, it really does look like, Alex, you're about to show the show that your hostages are still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just hold up today's newspaper and we'll know it's true. I want a 747. <laughs> From now on, on, no brown eggs in any supermarket in the San Jose, San Francisco, Olkin, Mendocino, or other supermarket areas. And I only want it half full of fuel. <laughs> what? Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't ask. I want tickets to the World Cup. Yes. So that's what I want. But only the finals. Only the finals. And no kazoos, please. Uh, They're not kazoos. They're Whatever. They, they sound like kazoos. kazoos. They does. kill me. Ugh. They do sound like kazoos. Somebody yeah. sending me one from uh, South Africa actually played, at a, played, if that's the word you'd use, at a World Cup game. So I'm very, looking, very much looking forward to that. Is she going to pull it out of the butt of the person that got it rammed in there by, by an irate fellow fan? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they keep saying this is like a traditional South African soccer. We oh, had those when we I had, was a kid. Exactly. And, and, and our parents were smart enough to say, okay, with this, that's being thrown out of the car on the way back from the parade. Yep. You're not getting this yeah. back. Exactly. Enough, right? Enough. We please. had them, but we called them horns. We didn't have a fancy name, the Vuvuzela. We didn't have a yeah, fancy they name just, for They should just call them annoying. Yeah. <laughs> They're just, yeah. Oh my God. So uh, I guess there's really a, one big story today, and that is that day after tomorrow, Thursday morning, 7 a.m., Apple stores open. I presume, and I don't know, maybe you guys know, that this means also Radio Shack, Best Buy, Walmart, yeah. uh, and uh, who else? I'm leaving somebody else. Oh, AT&T, I've heard of them, will uh, be opening their doors, uh, presumably early. I'm not sure how that's going to work. The, uh, the The deal is, if you if you were one of the lucky few who got through on Monday, last Monday, one of the 600,000 lucky few, I did not. And I came back Tuesday and found out I wouldn't get my phone until July 15th. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if yeah. if you got if you got uh, if you got in on Monday, you had two choices. You could buy it for delivery on Thursday. And folks, enough with the stories that it's that Apple said it's going to come today. 
Liars. It's not going to come today. Apple does this every time. You will watch. There'll be a magic hold put on your phone. And it will arrive Thursday with everybody else's. What is nice is that at least they're making sure that it really is going to arrive on that day. That's the thing that always makes me nervous about ordering online is I feel like I'm going to be going somewhere. I really want it that day. And uh, so that takes some of the pressure off. They've done they've done uh, very well with this. They did that for the iPad launch. And I remember getting that email saying, oh, yeah, it's going to arrive three days early. And of course, they hold it. They did it with the last 3GS. I, that's how I got my 3GS. Why would somebody... Um, I mean, what, what is the reasoning that because you, you like to wait in line that you would say, I'll go pick it up? You don't trust that it'll arrive? So you want well, some experience. people couldn't get it, right? Go ahead. Sorry, it's Fred. You want the experience, Fred? Yeah, I was going to say, people, people like that, you know, the camaraderie of waiting in line and being beat over the head with, uh, hey, you might get something cool at the end of this wait. I don't know. Uh, you know, for me, I, as I get older, I'm getting more into the... You know what? I'm going to let the fools rush in and get theirs, and then I'm just going to wait, even though, you know, I have to wait because I didn't get mine early. But, you know, I'm, I'm okay with my iOS 4 on my 3GS, and I'm just going to hold out and wait for mine to show up one day. When it does, I'll be happy. But, you know, I don't need it right now is what I'm saying. I think it has more to do with some people just don't want to have to wait at home all day long for the truck that's going to come. Because you talk about the heart heartbreak when you see that post-it note because you walked your dog for oh, five minutes the and worst. that's when the you, well, that's when UPS came and tried to deliver your absolutely wonderful new toy. But if you're really committed yeah. to the iPhone, you will stay home all day. Come on. Oh yes, that's that's a, that's, that's a lack of commitment. I'm sensing iOS flu is going to be sweeping <laughs> most tech sectors. Do not do not get try to get tech support for anything before 1 p.m. Yeah, I'm. Somebody's telling me iPhone repair who is just north of here is saying. Some people have already got them. Mm. Really? Uh, I mean, I think it makes sense. See, I would say that for Apple, from, for Apple's point of view, it may, really makes sense for people to get it. If you order it online, you actually get it before everybody else because then that would push a lot more people online, put a lot less pressure. I guess well, that was a mistake. No, that's exactly what they don't want. Mm. All right. Well, so Apple according to according to Engadget, which has a picture, so I guess it must be true. Um, iPhones are, in fact, starting to arrive now. Well, Apple Insider had a story about some people getting an email from Apple that not only said uh, you'll be getting yours on the 23rd, but also reiterated twice that you might you might see later shipping dates and other pieces of information. We promise you that will be available. That will be uh, arriving on the 23rd. So check the check the delivery site and plan accordingly if you need to be home to sign for it. <sighs> I haven't checked it since. I, I saw this story this morning. I haven't checked it out myself. Somebody on Mac Rumors says he's got his... I don't... Well, man, there's pictures. They got the pictures See, to prove all, it. All these stories just hurt me, you know, because I want mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is from Apple Mojo. He posted this uh, at 1.09 p.m. his time. I don't know. What, maybe that's like an hour ago. FedEx just dropped off my app. And by the way, we're recording this on Tuesday, the 22nd. FedEx just dropped my iPhone 4 just a few months ago. A activation was snappy and smooth. Well, of course, you're one of three people who has one. <laughs> Impressively cool. FYI, as of last night before bed, my delivery date was still the 24th. Somebody screwed up, I think. Mm. Well, also, keep in mind with those, like, square corners and sharp edges, this is going to be the easiest one to model in, like, SketchUp ever. <laughs> so if you want to see, like, King John Hill got his a week early, that's, that's, uh, examine the pixels on that shot. That's King John. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so uh, how many of you have installed iOS 4 on your 3GS? I guess that's the question I should ask, because that did come out yesterday. Andy, what do you think? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, I'm trying to figure out if it's, I, I have, a, unfortunately, I only have one 3GS. Uh, so I've been trying to figure out if this is actually faster, in addition to all the other features that have been listed, if it's actually faster than the stock 3GS, because it feels a lot snappier. Uh, they, Interesting. Uh, well, it, why not? I mean, you could make the software be more efficient, right? Yeah. And, and, and already it's changed the way that I use the iPhone. Uh, whereas the home, the, the, the springboard screen used to be, you know, the home position of where you go, with the, the, the concierge to the your entire experience. Now it is the application switcher because... After mm -hmm. using it for about an hour, you find that all the applications that you commonly use anyway, those icons are just right there in the app switcher. So there's almost never a, an excuse to go back uh, into Springboard anymore. Uh, and I really think that the, 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 the your 20 minutes spent in the iTunes application organizer creating new folders and just burying every single icon after page two 
in a folder is going to be time really well spent. I'm really, I'm really pleased with iPhone 4. So will you do everything in a folder and just have like two pages of applications? I, I really do think so. Uh, it's, it, it's, it, it's solved one of the biggest problems that I've always had with the iPhone, which is that you just have to go page after page after page after page mm -hmm. and try to keep track of where you're organizing these things. Yeah, there's manually. no way to name a page so you don't know where, where it's going. Exactly. It just gives you a, a level of control. Uh, but the, the big, the big, uh, in terms of like one line sort of <laughs> comments about about iOS four, I was making jokes back in MacWorld at, in February, trying to push like my iPhone book uh, at, at my publisher's booth about how this is the first book to cover the iPad Nano. Everything you need to know about the iPad Nano, getting the most out of your iPad Nano with all the secrets in this book, iPhone fully loaded. Uh, and really, after using iOS four. I really think that it does turn an iPhone into an iPad Nano. There's so so many of the, the yeah. features that I really, really like about the iPad from simple things like being able to use a Bluetooth keyboard to more complicated things like being able to like email yourself a file as an attachment and then open it, have, have mail open it in a specific other application and then have the application be able to edit it and save it in its own storage space. That really elevates what you can do with an iPhone. Now, correctly, you might say that this is, these are things you could do on a Sony Ericsson phone five years ago, but it's Apple and they're doing it a different way and a better way and it's Apple, it's Apple, shut up, shut up, shut up. It's Apple, it means it's better. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, Apple is sending out an email. I'm seeing this now on Engadget that says you uh, recently received a shipment notification from Apple advising you your phone is shipped. This email is to confirm delivery will occur on June 23rd, Wednesday, a day before it's available in the stores. So this does, you're right, Alex, this kind of indicates that maybe they would uh, be pushing people to order online and get them out of the stores. Although the line experience is an experience. Mm -hmm. well, I think it, I think it was an experience, and I think it was an important. I think it was an important part of their progression. But I think at this point, it requires so. I mean, it's so much setup uh, for the, every Apple store. And the reality is, is that it's not generating more. I mean, it is generating some excitement, but it's not generating more revenue. And it, what it is does it kind of blocks up the whole store. That's true. Um, you know, it's a very expensive. It slows thing down for those Apple. iPad sales. They're opening early, so that's, you know, when you're talking about thousands and thousands of employees right. uh, coming in three hours early, uh, and then all the planning beforehand, mm -hmm. and then all the extra man hours and all the other things, you know, it turns into a lot of money that Apple's spending on on just excitement. And the question is, they already kind of have that now. Uh, it, it's not clear whether they need it, and it seems like it'd be much more efficient for them to keep on moving people towards, you know, just, just go online, just, just handle it there. Well, if you're watching live, and you're in the Petaluma area, you have one hour to bring us your iPhone 4. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got one. Or uh, else we kill a hostage. Right, Alex? <laughs> yes. Bring the little girl He's to the right camera. Here. Well, well, you're just making Frederick and me feel worse because we aren't going to get ours now. I mean, if we had managed to get in on Monday. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at my screen now. It I'm says mine too. is shipping July 2nd for delivery July 6th to July 8th. So, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. So it means I have to listen to all these reviews and all these people with their phones until at the latest July 8th. But you so. are going to upgrade to OS 4, right? I have. I have upgraded. And I agree with Andy. I'm, uh, and I may, I may, you know, I hated paging through app pages and pages of apps. So I have two screens. I have one with um, uh, all my apps on it, you know, the ones that I use every day, and then another screen of, uh, of, of nested apps. And, you know, I'm happy with that. So it's just two screens back and forth. And if I really can't find something, I'll just dive into the, uh, into, you know, um, into the search and, and dig for it that way. So it's a, it's a much easier way to use a phone. And like, you know, Andy, I agree with you. It has changed the way that I'm using my iPhone and I cannot wait. It's almost painful to go from I to OS from iOS, iOS four to the iPad now, because now I have pages and pages right. of apps there and you know, there's that disconnect. So and we I won't get the that. iPad till this fall for some reason. I'm not I know. Sure. So I have to deal with that. You know, how about the multitasking guys? It's hard to um, test. I've tried so Pandora, but I haven't, you know, it, it, I don't know. Uh, Alex, you tell me. I haven't really, it, it hasn't really kicked in for me, you know, what, what, what the multitasking is. It's not really multitasking. Well, so what yeah, we're, multi pausing. Right? <laughs> not, I mean, none of it is real multitasking. I think that the number one line in all these mobile operating systems is to say that none of, no mobile operating system multitasks in quite the same way that most users expect multitasking to work on a desktop. It's always a way of, it's always a little bit of a shell game and a little bit of an illusion that you have all these applications totally active and totally alive in the background doing lots of productive things while you're using using the web browser or using mail. 
Uh, unfortunately, I, there just aren't a whole lot of apps out there in the App Store right now that can really exploit not just multitasking, but I, basic iOS 4 features. Pandora is the one that I think Apple must have helped them a little bit because that's the one app that was definitely out the door on day one. And it mm -hmm. does work really well. Yeah. <laughs> in, in that, well, what do you know? For the first time in the, in the life of this device, Pandora Music does indeed keep playing. It doesn't. The iPhone is not screwing me as it usually does out of Pandora Music. Uh, the the really cool thing is is going to happen when we do when we have things like Flickr uploaders, where we can simply say, please keep upload uploading. these nine pictures, yeah. right? These and then we use a, a, the the ability to keep a thread open and simply say, I know that you're closing me down, but keep this one thread open and then notify when this thread is done. That's when we're really going to uh, start to think whether or not this is a useful thing or not. I mean, there are. I I, I would disagree that the, there are true multitasking uh, operating systems. I know the uh, this piece of crap Nokia No 900, which I'm using, is multitasking because it's it's Mamo, and I'm pretty sure the Android's multitasking. In fact, one of the things that kills the Android battery oh. is Google Talk in the background, which is always checking to see if anybody's chatting with you. But the, but there's always a certain uh, there's there's always a certain level of the operating system having the power to decide that this app doesn't seem to be doing very much, so I'm just simply going to suspend all of right. its operations for now. Right. So it's it's not going to be in the same sense of a desktop where if you run a, if you run an app, it doesn't need to be specifically set up for multitasking. It just simply runs sticks and does whatever it has to do in the background, grabbing however many duty cycles. Yeah, I think you know actually right. having looked at the Android SDK, they do it quite int intelligently, which is that you can remain in the background until your resources are needed. But everybody understands that a mobile platform has less memory, less CPU. Um, and so has has to have the ability to say no, no, I'm sorry, you can't keep running in the background. We got other things that we're doing here. Yeah. And, and, and to Android's credit, it's not that Apple makes a big deal about how they did it this way. Because if you don't do it this way, you're going to drop power. If you don't do it this way, it's going to destabilize the platform. Uh, and even when I was trying really hard to destroy my my Android's battery with background processes, the worst thing you can say about it is that all these background processes just make your battery life awesomely unpredictable right where that's really exactly I mean, right i mean the, the, I, I do like the fact that on other uh, on other platforms i can count on getting three and a half hours of really heavy use out of it there have been times when i forgot to close a certain thing or, or, or forgot or I, I should have force quitted something and then sure enough 45 minutes later i'm at like 10 percent. i have to shut it down so i can make a phone call three hours later yeah which is which is kind of a problem a bit of an inconvenience i'm really curious about iphone 4 um battery life because they, they don't make a big deal they say more talk time they didn't make a big deal about more battery life but it sounds like well, more battery life and a faster processor which nobody's really talking a lot about but it's the same as the ipad processor that should make a big difference during the, during the key during the keynote they did have a whole screen up there for battery life i think they were saying something about oh, across the board something about 10 to 15 percent greater battery life nothing spectacular but at least enough to convince you that you weren't going to be paying a really bad uh, uh, battery life price right. for having this huge display and this, this more powerful processor right Right. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that the RAM is going to make a big difference. I mean, that's one five, of the things. 12 megs, more, twice what the iPad has. Yes. Yeah, so, and, and that kind of, uh, you know, we're back when we had G3s and G4s, the reason the G3s were going so much faster than the G4s was a larger L2 cache. Now, it's not exactly the same, but uh, RAM is always one of, the, one of the cheapest ways to speed up an operating system because it just gives it a lot more to work with. It's not constantly checking stuff in and out. Uh, and uh, it's gonna, I think that's going to make a big difference. I think we're going to see some of the performance there. And especially it also means when you're talking about uh, games and so on and so forth, it'll affect the number of texture maps that can be loaded, the number of, you know, there's a lot of things that that, that type of thing, uh, you know, how much, what, what can be cached up. Uh, yeah, and yeah. video editing and, and photo editing is what I'm, I'm most looking forward to, is being able to actually edit high-definition video. In your camera? Man, that's, you, that's in your phone, you want to do that, huh? Yeah, I totally want to do that. You I mean, can crazy. you imagine you're on a trip somewhere and you want to put together just, even, even if you want to put together a podcast uh, or something, you could do it right from your phone. That's mind-boggling. I have to say, I shoot tons and tons and tons of videos. Like, I, I just have these, these funny little videos I shoot at NAB, and then also the stuff I shoot in Africa. And what slows them down for me posting them is, ah, there's a little mess on the front and the back, or there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a mess, or there's some stuff I'd like to cut out in the middle, and I go, oh, I'm going to cut that out, I'm going to put it on my computer, and then I'll do it, and then I'll upload it. And if I could just do it right there, like I just want to snip this out right here, or I want to snip something out real quickly, uh, being able to do that really quickly and easily on my phone, I think from a newscaster's perspective, from someone who's blogging. Well, we'll uh, see. It'd be interesting if suddenly, all of a sudden, we're seeing a lot of edited in the phone stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the point of, point of view, but can you use iMovie on uh, uh, on a 3GS or does it? Ha you have to have a four to do the iMovie. Four, four only. You have to have yeah, the hardware. The and I think that's part that's part of the, of the RAM. RAM. I think that's a that's an it's issue. RAM also, the... sure, I'm sure, sorry, sure, sure. Yeah. Sorry, that's wrong. No. What is it? I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. I said it was part of the OS. Obviously, it isn't. It's something you have to purchase. My, my yeah. mistake. 
Yes, yeah, five bucks, right? Something like that. Right. And uh, and you do purchase it, but okay, so that was the question. So you do need the new hardware, and you know it makes sense. You need five twelve megs of RAM. I mean, it's kind of amazing to think how little <laughs> RAM. This well, is I mean, this is this. By the way, I was thinking about this last night. You, uh, when you're talking about computers, Macs or PCs, you always talk about how much RAM, how much RAM to get. You always talk about this, you know, processor speed and things like that. And as we get to with both the iPad and the iPhone, an appliance computer. It's no longer, nobody knows that the iPad has 256 megs of RAM. I didn't know until I was reading the iPhone 4 reviews. It doesn't matter. Does it work? Yes. Do you, right. So we, then you don't care anymore. It's an appliance. I think that, for that's the type typical of Apple. They, they don't talk about, they don't want to get into numbers. They want to get into features. And yes. no one really cares about how much memory it has. They care about how fast it is, how responsible, and, I've made and this what level of apps it can run. I've made this analogy before, but that is a sign of maturing of the industry. The same thing happened with the stereo industry. In the early days of hi-fi, everybody's talking about total watts, RMS per channel, and, you know, how much distortion and blah, blah, blah. And, and the music was secondary for the hi-fi heads. It was all about speeds and feeds. Then content started to take over, and nobody now talks about, total watts RMS per channel. It's about the content, and that's what's happening now with the computer industry, and that, I think, is a sign of a maturing industry, an industry that people, real people use, not enthusiasts. Well, and I think also that the, 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 when you're not talking, uh, today, I mean, this, this, was, this changed uh, over the last five or six years, but today, if you're not doing video, if you're not doing 3D, if you're not doing scientific heavy calculations, you know, anything that you buy, all of these things are are plenty fast to run just about anything that the average person's gonna gonna use. The, yeah. Those trucks are only necessary for the larger operations today. The trucks, that's a Steve Jobs analogy. <laughs> yeah. He sees our trucks. What about iPhone updating? Apparently there are two ways that the iPhone can be updated. The simplest is to do a direct update. Tell, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm reading this from the, uh, uh, the unofficial Apple weblog. Apparently some people might have had trouble updating on a 3G to the iOS 4, not 3G as 3J. It's a big update. Uh, w w you could do the update button on the device's information page in iTunes or simply letting iTunes continue with an upgrade when it automatically detects. The other option is, of course, to do a full restore. Uh, and apparently, in some cases, the update in place is not as it will get stuck on a 3G. And you'd be better to do a full restore. Frederick or, uh, or Andy or Alex, have you had trouble with the... I haven't done an update. My, my 3GS is right. lost. Mine, I, I've actually failed. The update for some failed. reason has failed downloading to mm -hmm. iTunes three times now. How I'm big is exactly. it? 374 megs. Jeez Louise. And, yeah. and uh, it's failed three times and I don't know exactly why. It, you know, it, gets a, it gets a certain distance and then it just stops. And so hopefully sometime today I'll... I'll get it, uh, and it's different places. It's not like the same place, so I'm not sure whether it's my connectivity, whether it's, I've, I've right. been in three different places doing it, so it's not the same network, uh, but every single time it gets to a certain point, I seem to have a connection, but it's not downloading anymore. I, sus and it's I suspect that's just because a lot of people are downloading it all at once, right? Yeah, well, I updated mine last night, and it uh, it went flawlessly, I gotta say. It just, you know, zoomed right in there. I, you know, I docked the iPod. You didn't do a restore, iPad. you just did the uh, regular update. I did the regular update, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I left the house and came back, and it was ready to go. But one thing I will say, I will say, um, when I was playing around, you know, joyously nesting folders, uh, <laughs> the device seemed to heat up. You know, it got it got really noticeably hot in my hand, and then uh, then it froze. Then so I restarted it. And it's been yeah. fine since, but that was that was kind of weird. TUAW is saying that three G users should do a restore. Um, and, of course, you sync before you do the restore, so you're not going to lose anything. It'll all back right up. Yeah. I think a restore is like a clean install. It's probably a better job, better idea in, in general on any machine, on any computer, including a yeah, phone. It's, it's also a good idea if you want to use the new encrypt all contents feature. Ah. Uh, uh, oh. Because it, it, you can't do that in situ. You have to obviously start off by removing everything off the device and then re-encrypting it and then putting it back on. It's a very simple process, but if you don't do a restore, it's not going to work that way. Computer World is pointing out that as part of the iOS 4 upgrade, Apple patched 65 vulnerabilities on the iPhone, half of them critical. Uh, I guess they didn't well, want to At least really... they're patching them. Yeah. Uh, I hate to hear about those after, though. Well, know? and if you, have an old, uh, if you have a really old iPhone, the 2007 iPhone or iPod Touch, uh, or an iPad, you have to say, hmm... <laughs> Hmm. What are those thirty-two point 
five vu- critical vulnerabilities <laughs> that I should be aware of. Uh, 35 bugs, 54% of the total were tugged with the phrase, tagged with the tugged, tagged with the phrase arbitrary code execution. As anybody who's listens to Security Now or Steve Gibson at any time knows that arbitrary code execution is not good. Uh, that is a serious, you could be used to hijack your phone. This is something mm-hmm. we is not talked a lot about, but as phones turn into computers, they're going to have the same vulnerabilities. They're going to be heir to the same vulnerabilities computers are heir to, Yes. You guys are scaring me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna restore. You better update. Right you better this. restore. You better update it, Frederick. What are you doing? What are you crazy? You'd better send me your iPhone and your iPad, Frederick. It's good. Uh, thank you. Mail now. I'll send you my Kindle. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Since it's now only worth 189. Did you see the apparently. price war that's going on? That, that's no. That's 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 the Apple Ripple effect. Both it's got so to now be. both the Amazon Kindle Reader and the and the Barnes and Noble Nook are in a race to the bottom. To 189 for the Kindle, 149 for the Wi-Fi only version of the Nook. <laughs> that's just such great news just for e-publishing in general because I think that was the magic price that everybody has been waiting for. Not just the geeks who are really into this sort of stuff, but someone who wouldn't buy it for themselves, but 150 bucks is cheap enough that they might actually get one for their birthday or for Christmas, and then that would be the last time they wind up buying paper books. That's a huge, yeah. huge thing. My wife has become a Kindle fanatic. You know, I, get, I, I gave her my, uh, my Wi-Fi iPad when I got the 3G. She put it aside, and, is, and, and I also gave her the Kindle when I got my uh, iPad. And she loves the Kindle, and she's buying books on the Kindle. And she, and my mom, who has an iPad, still reads on the Kindle. So there's still a market for the e-ink screen. People, there a lot of people, especially if you're reading in light, in sunlight, want an e-ink screen. Yeah, yeah. Is and that also, the main I, reason I, I, though? I, I, if, if you're going to read it in light, or or because I, you know, I once I got my iPad and I got the Kindle app installed on it, and all my books got sucked into it. I have I haven't honestly I don't even know if my Kindle is charged right now. So it's you know I don't I don't see the reason to go back. I know that I know that my Kindle DX is somewhere inside the office or the bedroom or the <laughs> living room or maybe the car or maybe a piece of luggage from a, two, two months ago. Exactly. I'm confident that it's, I can I can say where it is within let's say a 40 yard radius of where I am right now. <laughs> hmm? Not within 30, but definitely within 40. 40. I know within 40. <laughs> How big is your house? <laughs> I think you uh, could say with some confidence that everything in your home it's... is within 40 yards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll say that I'm pretty sure that if I left it in an airport, things would have been charged for by now for one mile. You no know, it's funny. That was the first thing I thought would have happened when I lost my Kindle. I left it on the plane. I, I waited to see if anybody would buy a book, and they didn't. So I don't know what happened with it. I, you know, I, I, think, I think that the issue is for me is it's not so much money. It's not so much the e-ink. I think that the, the thing that I get concerned about is just space. I mean, it's just another thing I have to carry around. If I'm going to carry right. something around, I just don't want to carry around a unitasker. You know, I just want to, oh, I want ooh, something that's going to do everything. It's a unitasker. <laughs> it, is. All it is. It's, it's a like a unitard. It's like the worst thing you can have. <laughs> it is. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, it's, it only does one thing. I mean, you know, I, my phone now does a lot Stupid of things. Stupid lip balm. I, I, I can't get an email on this. Oh, thank <laughs> you, lip balm. <laughs> Screw you, lip balm. Exactly. exactly. Well, you, can use, you know, you can use lip balm for a lot of things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a, lip balm. Is there anything it can't do? So, uh, I mean, that's that's the concern. It's it's a big item to have to only have one use in my backpack. That's the that's the thing that I have a problem with. The price drop though has to have been driven by the fact that Apple is starting to eat into their business a little bit with iBooks, or no? I think it more has to do with the, it took a while for them to f- see what the bi- iPad business is going to be like. They weren't going to do anything that was arbitrary or or speculative. Now that they have three months worth of data to see, here's where here's here's how our business has been affected by the iPad. Now we make our plans for the next two years starting now. Yeah, I think that's the also reason. That's also the reason why we haven't seen these. Well, maybe they're uh, dumping uh, it. Maybe you know there have yeah. been rumors there's a Kindle too uh, just around the corner. Maybe they're dumping them. Mm-hmm. Maybe, but it's just too smart for them to have a seriously sub two hundred dollar Kindle. I think I think this is getting all your armies uh, on the border for the Christmas season, where they can say we have the Kindle Two that costs yeah. two hundred eighty nine bucks and has yeah. a color screen, it has all these other cool things, and the three G is always free, unlike with the iPad, where it's thirty bucks a month. And for those of you who are just getting into it, we also have the one hundred fifty dollar model, or the excuse me, in the case of the Kindle, the one hundred eighty nine dollar model, which is a good way to get you introduced in, in, introduced into the one wonderful world of giving us all your money for our books. I'm sorry, <laughs> I meant the wonderful world of e publishing. The sharing. <laughs> Go ahead. Is is there a market over three hundred dollars with the iPad there? I mean, That's, is there? No. Can, can you make something? No. Above $300? No. No. With not not just iPads, but netbooks. I mean, there's just too many things. Three hundred dollars is now expensive. Yeah, it's the ceiling yeah. now. Yeah. The, the 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 big loser, and I'm only I mean the sense of losing a war, not being a bunch of losers, is the people who are making the Alex e-reader. 
because it was an interesting idea, the idea of having an e-ink screen up, up top and, a, and an Android sort of PDA sort of thing up down at the bottom of the color screen that has a really good browser on it. Interesting concept. But as soon as Apple announced a price of $500, the expensive. idea of this hybrid device that costs 400 bucks, mm -hmm. because $400 is now pretty much the third rail. If you t step one toe over it, Everyone has to start thinking, well, why don't I just wait another couple of months, save another hundred bucks and get a real multi-touch, really cool computer that Stephen Colbert is using as opposed to having this <laughs> odd hybrid sort of thing that's only black and white most of the time. Right. Yeah. Lots to talk about, lots more to talk about. And we will in just a little bit. But before we get too much farther, I know there are a few of you who are saying, I want the new iPhone, but, you know, how am I going to pay for it? And I've got a solution for you. It's Gazelle. Gazelle. Don't just sell it. Gazelle. Get some cash. To pay for your new iPhone when you sell your old one at gazelle.com slash iPhone. If you go there right now, gazelle.com slash iPhone, you could select your iPhone. They have a special page just for it. The, you know, the, the amazing thing is you can get, you can almost certainly get that 200 bucks that you would need unless you have a really old or beat up iPhone. Go to gazelle.com slash iPhone. You're going to select, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. That's, I am rather gazelle-like. You are gazelle-like, but that's not the shot I was looking for. There it is. And I don't know why it's a double box. For those of you uh, listening, pay no attention to the idiot behind the camera. Uh, gazelle.com slash iPhone. There it is. Get cash for your phone. So you select your model. Hey, trade in now. First thousand customers get a Zag iPhone screen protector. That's cool. 2G, 4 or 8 gigs or 16. So you could, you could I, have the, uh, I have the 3GS 32 gigabyte. That's the... Yeah, I would if Abby hadn't lost it. Let's just see how much Abby cost me. Makes a call successfully? Yes. Free of water damage? Well, it was when we lost it. Perfect. Well, let's say good condition. AC adapter, original cables, and they will pay me $189. Now, they send you a box. You put it in the box. They get your iPhone. They check it out, make sure it matches your specs, and then you get paid. You could select the payment method you want, by the way, PayPal, check, or... Get a Amazon gift card, you'll get a five percent bonus, or get a Walmart gift card and just bring it down to use get the phone at Walmart. You can also donate your phone to charity. And I like this is one of the things Gazelle does that I think is really, really cool. You could just say, give the value of the iPhone to charity and they will take care of it. Now, because you're listening to Mac Break Weekly, you're gonna get a five percent bonus if you gazelle your iPhone before July 15th. Here's how here's the super secret way to do it. When you're checking out, enter the word iPhone 5, I-P-H-O-N-E number 5, all one word, iPhone 5 at checkout. And if you're one of the first thousand audience members to gazelle your iPhone, a free Zag iPhone screen protector will come your way along with your check. Gazelle isn't just for iPhones, of course. You can gazelle everything. GPSs, Xboxes, PlayStations, Wii's, your ex-wife, MP3, play no, wait a minute, that's wrong. I didn't see the ex-wife. Ebook readers, laptops, cameras your ex-husband, gadgets in 20 product categories, over 200,000 unique items. And do check it out. If you have a charity you're trying to raise money for, better than a bake sale, have a gazelle sale. They'll even get a dedicated page just for your group. Gazelle.com. And by the way, when you have something that you send them that they cannot sell, if it's really old, beat up, or, you know, useless, they will help you recycle your gadget responsibly. They use... Cloud Blue is their primary recycling partner today, one of the most respected domestic recyclers, band certified. Uh, they owe, a guarantee they'll be using a uh, documented environmental management system, independently audited. They, they care a lot about no landfill, no export, no use of prison labor, uh, no kids, of course. You know, they do it in the U.S., in a responsible, reliable recycler. So it's great for recycling and selling. But right now, gazelle.com slash iPhone and use iPhone 5 at checkout to get an extra 5% bonus on your iPhone. This is a way that you can afford that new iPhone. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the complaints from your spouse. I just went through the process and it says it'll pay me $99 for my Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty close to what you'd pay today. <laughs> they got to yep. be careful there because if, you know, they could, the lines could cross. People could be buying Kindles and selling them to Gazelle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should they do you notice they have a graph. I don't know if you've noticed that of the value yeah. as the value goes up or down. It's going down. Yeah. <laughs> it's plummeting. Uh and this is so cool. I really uh, think it's a neat business. I um had lunch with their uh, CTO a few weeks ago and it's just a, it's at, it's out of Boston. It's just a great little business. gazelle.com 
slash iPhone. Don't sell it. Gazelle it. Uh, let's see. Are we uh, anything else? Oh, oh, let me ask you this. Okay, so Thursday. By the way, we're going to do special coverage of the iPhone uh, launch because we like to do that. Breaking news coverage. 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern. We will be starting our coverage at 1300 UTC for those of you on uh, World Cup time. <laughs> and uh, Alex, you're going to be at the San Francisco store. Yep. Uh, the Emeryville store, which is an e a store in the San Francisco East Bay of San Francisco. Uh, that's where Tom Merritt will be. And Sarah Lane, we're going to send her to the mothership, the Palo Alto. They call it Steve Jobs Apple store, the Palo Alto store. Uh, with live coverage. And then I would like, if anybody's at an Apple store at that hour of the morning, I'd love to get you Skyping in. We'll let you, we'll give you a special tweet uh, hashtag that you could Twitter us and tell us that you're, you know, ready to be and we'll Skype out to you and get you on the show. So we did this when the uh, iPhone 3G launched and we were, we started in New Zealand, went all the way around the world, 24 hours of iPhone. I won't do 24 hours. We're just going to do a few hours. <laughs> it was fun though. It was, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a good time. It's I think I got crazy. there at like, 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, it was... You saved my butt, because that was... I was really fading. <laughs> God, well, just, You're like Jerry Lewis was, at hour 27. Oh, if, yeah. If, if I'd had Ty a tuxedo, was undone. I would have... You're berating the cameraman. Oh. You're making the, the, the little kids cry. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun. So here's my question. I, I, I'm worse than you, Frederick. Mine's not going to come till July 15th at the earliest. You're at least going to yeah. get yours in a week. Yeah. Mine's not going to come for two or three weeks. Could I, do you think, I mean, they're going to sell it uh, on Thursdays, and not only at at and and Apple, but also Walmart and Radio Shack and Best Buy. Could I walk into a store, do you think, and get one? I, you know, I was thinking the same thing. If I could just show up at a store today, get one, and cancel my order online. But knowing the fiasco that happened with the pre-ordering, I'm afraid to even touch the last. I ain't canceling. I ain't canceling yeah, that pre-order. I don't. I'm gonna let it ride. Yeah, and let I'll it wait. ride, baby. You, you put all your chips on red. Yep, they're all in red. I'm going to wait till the thing shows up, and I'll be happy. Actually, yeah. black, because you can't pre-order the white, can you? That's right. Who wants a white iPhone, and why do they even make those? So you can put That's the not... pink bumper on it, and then it'll be really, really oh, Paris for... Hilton-y. Yeah, it's for Paris Hilton. I almost <laughs> I almost said it's for girls, but I know I would get a lot of email if I said that. That's why I said Paris hilton -y. Thank you. You're so smart. <laughs> You're a wise man. As with the 3GS, everyone has to make the choice, Darth Vader or Stormtrooper. It's up to you. Oh, I get it. Exactly. Oh, it's an or, imperial or... thing. Or Leia in episode four. So that would be brass. They would need a brass iPhone for that. Now it doesn't seem so shabby now, does it? No, that's kind of attractive. <laughs> although, no. although, although it's interesting, J Jason Snell pointed out that the white one, especially with the new lines, th those new sharp corners, it's such a positive throwback to the original iPod that was all flat ah. pr uh, uh, chrome and white and nothing else and hard edges and rounded uh, rounded corners. Well, if nothing, kind of interesting. If nothing else, you'd be special, right? I mean, I have a white iPhone. The first one I got, or the second one, one of them is white. And my, yeah. my son mocks me. He said, Dad, why do you have a white iPhone? Yeah, he was going to do that anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He'll, he'll mock me no matter what I do. <laughs> so, I don't know. You would be special if you had the white. Anyway. Maybe that's why you know. people want it. Just because everybody's going with the black right. one. you got to be right. a non-conformist. It'll be different. So, so, what is the consensus? Should I try to go to a Walmart? Okay, let's see. We're done. We'll do our broadcast 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then Windows Weekly. Should I just get up in the middle of Windows Weekly and run over to Radio Shack just to see? Is there any no. chance in the world that they'll have an iPhone? I don't know if no. I'd run over to Radio Shack, but I think that I'm probably going to go walk up. You know, I'm in. I'm going to be in the city, and and uh, I'll probably walk over to the Apple Store later and just see if I can just walk in and see if there's anything left. Uh, but I doubt it. I mean, if, yeah. I, I can't. I don't even know how many they sold. There must be a million. I just don't think they're going to have any. It's got to be a million now. Save yourself the disappointment, the Leo. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Hi. It's like it was like shopping for the Wii in the first two years. Hi. Do you have any iPhones? Now. Yeah, like Tiny Tim. Can I have some more? Do you have, Do you have an iPhone? iPhone? Well, I, the, 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 when, I, when the 3G came out, I thought, oh, I'm just not going to go to the opening thing. I'll, I'll get it the next day. And then it was sold out. And then it took me three weeks to get it of going to different a yeah. Apple stores. And so it, it can get, you know, ba painfully backordered. So I should just be happy that I've got it July 15th and just leave it at that. I have the the additional complication yes. that I'm upgrading yeah. an existing phone, and so I don't even know what's going to happen. These you yeah. can't take the SIM out of the old phone and put it in the new one. It's a micro SIM, exactly because it's mm -hmm. a micro SIM. That's good. that's going to be a problem for some people. But then again, if you're doing it the legitimate way, that was that wouldn't have been a problem anyway. But I, I think it's remarkable that we're talking about it's a phone 
And we already have, I, you're already going to get about 80% of the awesomeness <laughs> of the of the iPhone 4 I by know. getting just iOS 4. Thank you. Okay, no. That's what I'm saying, although, although, okay, uh, uh, know, That's it. <laughs> although, see, although I, I do have a little sympathy for you because there have been times when, as, as we've previously seen in this very show about, uh, about my Kindle reader, I know I have a FireWire 800 to FireWire 400 adapter somewhere in the house. Even if I were to pay myself eight dollars an hour to look for it, it would still be cheaper just to buy a new one. So if you still, so if you really don't know where your iPhone is, maybe it will be cheaper for you just to buy a new iPhone. Yeah, I'm just breathing deep. It's okay, you could go, go go see, uh, yeah, you know, go see Train Spot, and that's a, that's a good like primer on how to get through these withdrawals. And yeah, that's exactly it. I'm getting now the question. Shaky. Really, is what are you going to do with your old iPhone? I don't have it. My daughter lost it. That's the real problem. If I oh. if I had my 3GS, I probably wouldn't be. Well, you know, I had retired it for the Nexus One, which died. This the top. <laughs> okay, go ahead, fanboys. Go, yeah, gleefully. No, no. Gleeful it's, gloating. Go ahead. It's 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 more like that CEO who resigns before it knows that everything's going to start to tank really, really badly. It was a little badly. too. It was a little too quick. Yeah. <laughs> I rather rather than be fired, he just wants the dignity of of resigning. <laughs> Well, in his letter. if you see me carrying around a, a, a brick the size of a, a pack of <laughs> playing cards, it's the Nokia N900. That's the phone I've been using. Next, your Nexus One left to pursue other opportunities. It did. It, yeah, it said no. Le Leo I'm not going to continue to work. The best of his luck in his future endeavors. <laughs> I'm not going to continue to work. If you're going to, if you're going to make all this big deal. About you're, you're flirting a lot with that new I phone know, over there. Oh, yeah, that know. new phone's pretty cute. I'm my, just going to leave before Nexus One left me. You know, though, okay... Plug for HTC. I called them. Not no hold time. Maybe I called at the right time. Although it was, a, I think it was a Monday morning, which is notoriously bad for call centers. Uh, no hold time. They said, "Oh, no problem. You have two choices. You can send it. Your, I, we see yours is engraved. You could send it back and get it repaired so that you wouldn't lose the engraving. Or do you have another hand? They were very nice. Do you have another handset you can use? I said, "Yeah." They said, "Well, you could send it back. It'll take seven days. Or if you want, we'll just send you a new phone, and, and uh, you'll lose the engraving, but you'll have a new phone, and then you can send us the old one back." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, okay." So they're they're overnighting me in Nexus One. So I won't really be. You don't care about this, do you? Apple has sold three million. <laughs> I can just hear the stony silence from the family. No, no, no. See, I, th I, I think the Nexus One is. I, I've had a lot more respect for the Nexus One ever since like switching to it for. Uh, cold turkey it. for ten days. I love it. I, I really think I really think that once people start downloading uh, Froyo two point two and start seeing how good uh, how good Android can be without any of the third party add ons with some very minor interface tweaks that makes it more useful, it really was a reinvention of of this old phone that was just in a drawer for about a year for me. Yeah. So I'm and and I can use it to tether uh, free with T Mobile, so I can use it for Wi Fi. I don't need a Mi Fi. Well, Leo, another reason to wait. I'm getting messages in on Skype and Twitter uh, that folks are having issues activating these pre-released phones. So ah. maybe, maybe it's good to hold off for a little while. Oh, maybe you get the phone, but you don't get to turn it on. Oh, exactly. that'd be almost worse. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's way torture. worse. Oh. Two days. Oh. Two days. Uh. Just wait. I'm telling you, good things come. I am going to win a bet. Actually, I'm going to win two bets. I made a bet. Uh, when the iPad was announced with John C. Dvorak for a bottle of Bordeaux and, and a stranger in the chat room for $100 that they, Apple would sell 5 million iPads in the first year. In the first 80 days, they've sold 3 million. Unless something terrible happens, I think I'm going to win this bet. Well, I, you know, I, I, I still want to reiterate my bet was, was 8.6 million. You still think 8.6? I, I guess think you're on they're track. Tracking. They're tracking. I think that's too many. That's I think awful. maybe half that. They're, half that. They're tracking. They're tracking. There are 11,000 iPad-specific applications in the App Store, specific to iPad. Uh, and Apple said that it is, uh, it is announced uh, today that it has sold its 3 millionth iPad. It did it on Monday, just Jeez. 80 days after the introduction of its revolutionary and magical product. <laughs> has anything in the world ever sold that much? Oh, yes, come on. Time? That's not something uh, spectacular. I mean, a, a, a consumer electronics device in this price range, though. Three million, what? three million in the first eighty days. Yeah. What? What? I can't think of anything that sold that many at that price point. Well, Windows, Windows price. sold that many in, in 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 a week when it first comes out. Well, if, you, if 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 you're talking if you're talking about one specific model of one specific thing that costs five hundred eight hundred dollars. No, probably nothing. You might be right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, next next round of international launches is coming up uh, next month. 
Austria, Belgium, Hong Kong. That's Group C. Group D is Ireland, Luxembourg, Mexico. No, no, I'm, I'm in a FIFA mode. Netherlands, New Zealand, and Singapore. No pricing uh, announced yet for those countries. Uh, although I think the prices are pr pretty aggressive. They're, they're pretty close to the same prices in the U.S. Wow. So that's a big hit. <laughs> you got to wonder why even sell computers anymore when you've got an iPhone and an iPad in your mm -hmm. product. But it, it, it doesn't really make you wonder, right. like, what kind of reinvention is in store for Mac OS and the Mac hardware? Yeah. Does, so I, it, does, I have a crazy it, prediction. Okay. Okay. In the next five years, I think Apple's going to open source OS X. I like that. You mentioned that before, and I think I love that idea. It is open source kind of at its roots, Darwin. Well, the thing is, is that all they'd have to do is open source Aqua, you know, the top layer. Well, and, and the thing is, is I think Apple, when it, when when hardware sales reach ten or twenty percent of their of their revenue, I think that they could license and say this is the, this is what we're you know licensing as a uh, as an approved Apple whatever, and they'll still make money on that. Uh, open source the operating system, and what you end up with is a mature. Uh, cultivated operating system that people can then build on. More importantly, even if they licensed it out, it means that we can have the computers that we want. I mean, I, I love I love the Mac hardware, but it really frustrates me that Apple doesn't put USB three in. They don't. They 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 have these little computers without the express cards that they, that we don't that we don't have enough cards in the hard in the larger hardware. All those things would go away because Apple doesn't have to think about that anymore. They're just going to give us the operating system. Of course, there's the complexities of lots of different systems. That's what Windows. The good has. news. The yeah. good news is they are working yeah. on Xcode because you need Xcode to develop for the iPad and the iPhone. Uh, we're right. starting to starting to leak out now. They showed it at WWDC, but you know the developers are supposed to sign an agreement that they won't talk about any of this. But we're starting to hear about Xcode four now. It's starting to leak out, um, and a major redesign. Um, one, uh, one big window in effect. Uh, it sounds like you know the fact that they're revving it means that they're still paying close attention to it. You know, and uh, well, I, well, I think that they're they're paying close attention to that. But I think Xcode is the only thing that Steve cares about when it comes at this to, point to the hardware to the hardware. And so I think, and eventually, you could do that on an iPad. You know, the the there's nothing you know there's nothing about the you know you, you could do all yeah, of that. You're not going to so, develop on an iPad though. Uh, not yet. I mean, we don't know where the iPad's going to be in five years. Right. And so the but the machines but building the, machines. <gasps> but again, <gasps> again, if you, if you open source the system, you would still be able to have that that platform. And as I said, I at first I was scared when I started thinking about that, and then I realized for editors, for three D folks, it would actually give us a lot more of what we want. You could have the professionals have the crazy, tricked out systems that they want running OS ten, and everybody else has an iPhone and iPad, and that's fine. They're integrating interface builder ever, ever, into yeah. the project builder, which is kind of cool. You used to have to go out to a separate program to do the interface stuff, the widgets and all that stuff. This is starting to look like a very slick development environment. And they need, to, they need it to. Developers have to, you know, love it, right? The only thing they get to use. So, of course, they right. have to, yeah. there's one thing that has, they have to be totally – they just they can't, they can't develop for user number one. It can't just be for Steve Jobs because if that's the their their entire success and development for every software for everything that they make is based on developers all being happy with Xcode, what a juggling act! I would not want to be the manager of that product at Apple. Subversion in the entire company. Subversion and Git support built in. Those are the uh, the um, version control systems that are most commonly used by programmers. There's a new fix it feature that fixes misspellings um, and errors it's kind of got it's got it's kind of like a spell checker for programmers it even does the red squiggly underline <laughs> version control is uh, is uh, using git and subversion but it's done like a time machine what they're really doing and it's interesting is is making it easier and easier to use hoping to encourage i think new uh programmers to 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 come to this environment get comfortable with it because that's really what's going to power all of these apps it's very important. So you're right. I agree with you, Andy. This is the last thing that Steve Jobs cares about at this point, or maybe that was Alex's point. No, I, I, I meant it's the most. It's the most important thing that Apple makes at this point. It is, isn't it? Because because if again, if if they if they disconnect this product from the developers, if developers have complaints about Xcode that go unanswered, that's the feeder system for software for the iPhone, for the iPad, and for desktop applications. And and Apple has already emphatically stated that they are a company that's based on the software. They they make margin on the hardware, but the reason the the, the cherry on the top that gets people to buy the hardware is the experience of their operating systems and the third party software. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's more important than Final Cut. I mean, it really, it's the bread and butter at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apple has asked the FCC to keep the details of iPhone 4 under wraps. 
the company just just a couple of days ago, even though the phone comes out on Thursday, and in fact, we're going to have iPhone repair says they're going to come in here and take it apart on camera for us. <laughs> they bring a blender. We, I would not do that. I think that's sacrilege. <laughs> I will not blend it. I might blend this Nokia N nine hundred, however. <laughs> not that you're bitter. Not that I'm bitter or anything. Uh, the company has requested the FCC keep photos and information of the handset secret for forty five days. Patently, Apple once again has the scoop. The uh, letter was addressed to the FCC, signed by Robert Steinfeld, who is the wireless compliance manager with Apple. Apparently, there is a procedure at the FCC to do this. It says, quote, although Apple has begun to market the device publicly, these documents reveal technical and design information that has not yet been publicly disclosed in such marketing and that is protected by Apple as confidential and proprietary secrets. So they want a short-term confidentiality agreement so that the test setup the FCC uses, the internal and external views of the hardware, as well as the user's manual, will be kept confidential. Mm. It's interesting. I wonder, you know, I wonder what's going on here. Apparently they've done it before. I don't know. What, what, could, be, what could be so secret in there that, that, that we don't know about? I guess you can't really look into the A4 chip. There's no way to look inside there. That's why we didn't know how much RAM was in the iPad or the uh, iPhone until Apple actually told developers that. And I think a lot of it is, is that if you're gonna if you're gonna let that information out, you know, Apple just wants to get that head start as much of a head start right. as they can. People are gonna. I mean, obviously, some of it's patented, but people are gonna do it anyway. They're gonna do stuff that's like it, and Apple wants to you know sell five or ten million before everyone gets to that point and clones it. Yeah. According to AppleInsider.com, things that Apple might be trying to keep secret is the uh, pentaband support, five-band support uh, in the uh, cellular radio, 850, 900, 1700, 1900, and 2100 megahertz. The 800 is for Japan and New Zealand. Apple advertises quad-band support, but in fact, it looks like the iPhone 4 is, in fact, a pentaband possible support for cdma right or evdo what if that's built in oh well that would be really interesting that'd be a scooplet because mm -hmm. that yeah. means sprinter uh verizon that would affect at&t more than it affect apple <laughs> <laughs> not that we would w wish well, any you will have a lot of people, you'd have a lot of people like me that are just signed that we were re-signing a two-year agreement that if we knew that the yes. verizon was available we would have yes. gone whoa, 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 whoa. that's what you want yeah. 45 days mm -hmm. on yeah that's important. You're not going to sell this phone if, if there were the slightest hint that Verizon would have it in two months. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, let's say they do announce in two months Verizon's got it. How pissed off are, are, are you going to be? Mm -hmm. Aren't you going to feel, feel like Apple's uh, actually ripped you off? I, I'd feel moderately. I mean, I have to admit that I, 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 my pragmatic view of AT&T is that I think that any... Uh, any cellular network would have been brought to its knees by uh, this many iPad and iPhone users. And so I think that if, I think Verizon will just feel the pain when they get it. And so I'm not sure at this point, you know, whether a Verizon would be that much better than AT&T. Uh, I think AT&T has had to really build up their network. And even though it's not very good, uh, I think that part of that's just because it's getting hit so hard. Right. And so I, I think that they've built up a lot of muscle. And even though it doesn't look like they've succeeded, I don't know if anybody else can handle that. I mean, it's, uh, as I said, it's just, I think an iPhone user is eight to 10 times more network intensive than everybody else. And that's just going to, you know, that's going to hit the network, whether it's Verizon or AT&T. Because there's so much uh, custom uh, ASIC stuff in this phone, there could be stuff inside that we just, you know, like CDMA receiver that we just wouldn't know about. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I, don't know that, I don't know that I would switch right now unless there was a really compelling price point to the Verizon plan, I don't know that I would switch even if it was available because, you know, I know, I know there's a lot of AT&T hatred out there, but, you know, it, it, at least in the circles that I move in, my phone works, you know, a good 50% of the time, 51, so I'm okay. Wait a minute, I got to see this. This is uh, from CNN Money. The Apple Store, the guy first in line at the Apple Store right now in New York City has a sponsor. Oh, no. <laughs> Greg, G-R-E-G, -E Packer, P-A-C-K-E-R. Oh, it's the New same York. guy, isn't it? I'm here in line waiting for uh, iPhone 4G on uh, Thursday. He makes a living doing this, apparently. 
It's, it's, it's not the guy that's been first in line for every one of these things. Well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, some, and, sometimes, and sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not there. And if you think he's camping out there 24, he's not. He's just. Look who his sponsor is. Yeah, there you go. It's Gazelle. It's, it's, it's just the time of the guy. That was a, um, um, a website that's similar to eBay for um, electronics. Leo, should, should you be getting a guy down there? If you undercut him by like 10 bucks, that's get the freaking account. brilliant. We spoke. I, I uh, toured uh, their facility. And not only are they getting an ad with this clown in the front, they have. they're getting this on CNN. I am for them. Yeah, I want to meet their marketing people. That's brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. I would have I would have educated the guy a little bit more about what Gazelle does. I know. Uh, if I was going, you know, you I, know I could give you some copy, dude. iPhone camper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, that, well that, it definitely does send the message to the mass media and the public at large about how actually how, how, how actual and and, uh, and genuine this enthusiasm is that you know goodness gracious I guess all those people are waiting in line really do like this the phone and really are excited there is a Wikipedia a article about Greg Packer mm -hmm. he's an American highway maintenance worker from Huntington New York went to Huntington high he has been quoted. In more than 100, this guy makes a living doing this, 100 articles of television broadcasters as a member of the public, a man on the street. He's been photographed at least 16 separate times by the Associated Press, 12 times by the Post. His strategy is to appear at likely news events and offer short statements to reporters. Yeah, he's, he, he's, like, he's like our version of the John 316 guy. All he needs <laughs> is a rainbow wig. <laughs> he doesn't have much to do. Leo, shall we shun him? <clears throat> Let's Just shun. Say the word and we, sh we shall shun him. We are shunning Greg Packer now. He's he's a phony. He is shunned. Congratulations, Greg. You have been shunned. <laughs> the, the tribe is is throwing you out. That it was is your torch. hysterical. His, uh, Take the logo off the torch before he hand it over to us. He first, his first quote was in the press in uh, the Tampa Tribune in 1995. Quote, the Jewish people are fans of John Paul II. <laughs> <laughs> he just writes in line. He's a, he's he's a make he's a professional man on the street. That's wow, quite that's, a, that's quite a business. I didn't know that. I just didn't know that was possible. Who would have thought? Isn't that that's a niche if I ever heard of one? But you but you caught it, Andy. You said, "Oh wait a minute, that's that guy we saw last time." Yeah, that is very funny. <laughs> All right, well, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Goes to show, just just goes to show you, kids. You know, whatever <laughs> career you think you're going to have, your ideal job probably doesn't even exist yet. Did he think that he's going to be a professional loafer? No, he didn't. <laughs> and yet he chased that dream, and now that dream is like a ripe pear right in his hand, right, right for the eating. <laughs> uh, uh, just follow your bliss, friends. Do what you love, and the gazelle advertising will follow. We're going to take a break. Come back with more, lots more Mac news. But before we before we do that. GoToMeeting.com has a word for you. The folks at Citrix make online meetings easy, and I use it, and I love it, and there's a great iPad app for this. If you haven't used it, it's free. But before you can use the iPad app, you have to set up GoToMeeting on your Mac or Windows machine. So here's what you do. You do this for free, too. GoToMeeting.com slash MacBreak. GoToMeeting.com slash MacBreak. It'll take you a minute to it. Not even that long. If you're, you know, 30 seconds to install this thing. Now, the next time you're on the phone and you say, oh, gosh, I wish I could show you my keynote, or I, I have the spreadsheets right here, I, or we could work together on this document, if only there were a way, a little light will go off. You go, wait a minute, there is a way. I got go to meeting. It's installed. And you tell your, your, your client or your colleague or the person you're pitching, you say, go to go to meeting.com. Here's the meeting ID. You can, even, you can send them a link, make it easy. In an email, you can do it ahead of time. You can invite them to a meeting. It'll show up on their Outlook calendar, whatever. Or you could say, here, go to gotomeeting.com. Here's the meeting ID. Now they're seeing your computer. You can, they can show you their computer. It takes them uh, seconds to install, and all of a sudden you're collaborating, you're training, you're presenting. It has to be easy, by the way, or a client, you know, you're not going to make a, somebody you're pitching jump through hoops. And so they make it very easy. It includes... For one low flat rate, as many meetings as you want, as long as you want, plus phone and voice over IP conferencing, free. And it's 30 days free for you, a $49 value if you go to gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak. Try it. I know you'll find lots of uses for it. We have several accounts. Oh, somebody's just completed their iPhone no. upgrade. No, no, no. I just, I got, uh, uh, I, from our mutual friend Clayton Morris, got a, got a, got a note that, he talked to Gazelle today, and they're going to be there live on Thursday at the Apple Store, <laughs> Talk, taking iPhone 3G and 3GS trade for cash right there, then and there. Just have a box oh, out front. 
Here, we'll give you cash. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, this, they told me when I had lunch with them, he said, uh, yeah, this is the big, our busiest time every year is this iPhone thing. This is because Apple has conveniently staged a yearly update for a product that you continue to pay for for two years. So people need to do this kind of some, so, somehow upgrade thing. Frankly, Apple should have done it. <laughs> Could have saved themselves a lot of time. Oh, no, because iPhone 3s and 3GSs are always useful and valuable. Oh, Why yeah, would you yeah. want to trade it in? Hey, I got it. you know what? Let's commend Apple, though, that they did not charge for the OS 4 upgrade. They pushed it out ahead of the phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a nice refresh. That's a good mm -hmm. gift to people who, uh, you know, saying, look, we'll keep your 3GS or even your 3G. We'll keep it uh, relatively up to date. We'll give you this upgrade. That's a pretty good deal. They could have charged money for it. They yeah. could have blamed accounting practices and charged them 10 bucks. Is it free on the touch? Do you get it on it? It is. It, it is? is free. Mm -hmm. mm. And it'll, uh, I presume it'll be free on the iPad. Hopefully. I yeah. wonder why it takes longer on the iPad. I think, I think it's partly because they have to rethink of how these interfaces are going to work on the iPad. I don't think it necessarily follows that these same mechanisms for application switching would work as well on a huge, incredibly wide screen as it would on the, iPod, uh, on the iPhone. So, they, so I, I, I think, OS 4 iPad may be different. Uh, I think I, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, there, there are a lot of reasons why it could be different. I, I, think, I think the primary one is just that iPhone, uh, iOS 4 heading out in time for to be shipped on every single iPhone right. 4 That's was so important that yeah. let's not even waste any time. Uh, we're, we're already burning through 40 million iPads per month. They don't need this incentive of wait for I, iOS 4.0 for the iPad to come out. So I, th I, th I think it's mostly, I, I would guess it's mostly a problem of manpower rather than technical things. But I, I do, I wouldn't be surprised if things worked a little bit differently on the iPad than on the iPhone. Hey, Clayton Morris, I don't want to see Greg Packer on Fox and Friends. <laughs> 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 right? He, he, he is shunned. The, the community is, is shunning him. You must join the shunners. As a, as a matter of fact, there'll be a good shunted. visual, like the line of people behind him to ceremoniously one by one in sequence turn their backs. Oh, like as he, yeah. As he, real, as he realizes that, oh, 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 no, the CNN truck is pulling in. I better go from my hotel room two blocks away and run back to my place in line. Ceremoniously, the last person in line turns around then the next person, the next person. And then that'll be the story. I said, gee, why is everybody turning their backs? Oh, we've shunned him because we believe that he is just one of these publicity whores. You are shunned. Or as, as, they, as they say in New York, a whore. Wow. And therefore he has been shunned. Not banned, but shunned. He is welcome here. His money is good. If he wants to wait in line, he can do that. We are simply shunning him. According to CNET, uh, one analyst is predicting that by 2012, 16 and a half million iPads will be sold. So that's the first two years. 37,000 37, iPads a day have been sold. I, I, I would not have guessed that. I was, I was asked to predict it the first week, and I said, uh, more than three, I would say about five. And I thought I was being a little, because I, I didn't, because everyone was so excited about the iPad, I thought, well, how many computers could they sell of these, of this thing that never existed before, where everybody has to be sort of taught what this computer is and what it does. I would never have guessed that many sales. Yeah, I, so I, I, felt, when I, I felt like I was out on a limb when I said five. I didn't, I didn't feel absolute confidence. I thought, well, that's the most possible. But what, what I, I think neither of us, I don't think anybody realized is how I've watched now, uh, you know, my father-in-law, my mother, both in their 70s, um, my, our uh, CEO, Lisa, who is a dyed-in-the-wool Windows user. I, I've watched so many people just fall literally in a, in a way that you don't normally fall in love with technology. It's so intimate. It's like an iPhone in that sense. It's personal. And they and they literally have this re emotional relationship with it, and that's I think a very good sign for a, for a product when people get that emotional yeah. about it. You know, well, I'm I'm just shocked that it's it's, it's now officially been months since this has been released, and still if I'm using this down. in public, if oh well, no, I'm saying if if I'm using this in public, there is a one in three chance that I will be given I will be giving a five to ten minute demo of it from someone who is just incredibly excited to simply be seeing an iPad that's actually being you know the, the, I, I've heard about this I've always wanted to see one what is it like you know it's it's like bringing a mini celebrity in and I'm surprised <laughs> that there's still that level of excitement it, just three it, months it later. It happened to me last night. I checked in at the hotel and the desk clerk said, "Oh, I haven't seen one." I was yeah, I was I was like, yeah. well, "What really?" She said, Let me see it and and she's touching it. Now, what's interesting, so many people are familiar with the iPhone. She was instantly comfortable with the metaphor, and mm -hmm. she's touching it. She's, and uh, this, I thought that was very telling.
You know, you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting is my son, who has been playing with the iPhone and the iPad. He walked up to my laptop and he and he touched the, he touched my screen and then he just looked very disappointed. He was like, "I don't understand. <laughs> Everything should be touched." Working. That's yeah. exactly right, and that's why your prediction is probably true, Alex. That something's going to happen with Mac because we have that standard now. I just think, I would I think like Apple's the Retina cut, display on my next iMac. Well, that's need, for sure true. I need a million pixels and a touchscreen. That's for sure <laughs> true. We we need 300 DPI plus. Yeah. But also, uh, I found myself touching it. I, I did, yeah, two days ago, Ken Shepardson's showing me something on his netbook, and I touched. I reached out to touch it. So even I am am doing that. So I think that that's a sign. Uh, last week, Alex, I wasn't here. Did you talk about the new Mac Mini at all? We did. Okay, so that's I don't have to worry about that. Here's a story. <laughs> so I get I get uh, I'm, uh, yesterday I'm starting to, I'm buying an application on my uh, my wife's iPhone, not my iPhone, my wife's iPhone, and I see oh you have to agree to the new Apple Terms of Service, forty five page Terms of Service. <laughs> For, like I'm gonna sit here and read forty five pages. They said well we can't email it to you. No, I agree. Whatever it is. So it turns out inside that 45-page Terms of Service, here's a little paragraph. Apple and its partners use cookies and other technologies in mobile advertising services. Oh, actually, that's not the one I want to read. This is the opt-out, which I love. But I'll read this one. This is, this is actually good. To control the number of times you see a given ad, deliver ads that relate to your interests, and measure the effectiveness of ad campaigns. If you do not want to receive ads with this level of relevance on your mobile device, you can opt out. Oh, thank goodness somebody reads these things. This is from Apple Insider. Oh, no, I'm sorry, MacRumors.com, Erica uh, Silvka. By accessing the following link on your device. You ready? Everybody, oo.apple.com. That's all you have to do. Opt out, oo.apple.com. It's like Ooh. Facebook. We got so hard to remember. If you opt out, you'll you'll still get the same number of mobile ads, but they may be less relevant <laughs> because they'll not be based on your interests. In other words, we will stop collecting what you're what you're up to. You may still see ads related to the content on a web page or in an application, or based on other non personal information. And this, of course, only affects Apple advertising services. So that's cool. Oo.apple.com. Surf to it on your iPhone or I presume your iPad. Well, that was one thing. Uh, we learned by reading the 45 pages. But here's one that, this is the one that scared me. Los Angeles Times discovered this one. <clears throat> In the revised iTunes store terms, Apple may collect, quote, precise, real-time geographic location data for users of its products. And the data may be used by Apple and unspecified partners and licensees in order to improve services and advertising. The company says the data is anonymous and does not personally identify users. However, as we all know, if you get enough data points in a set, you can identify people easily. To provide location-based services on Apple products, Apple and our partners and licensees may collect, use, and share precise location data, including the real-time geographic location of your Apple computer or device. The data is collected anonymously in a form that does not personally identify you and is used by Apple and our partners and licensees to provide and improve location-based products and services. Does that bother anybody? Not particularly. Unfortunately, with those agreements, you know, it's, they're always worded in such a way that you don't know if this is just simply, we just want, if you ask, if you ask Google Maps to give you your location or Bing Maps your, your location, we want to have the legal right to say, Bing Maps, here is where our user is right now. Right. Please return us a map and routing. You don't know whether it is something as simple and innocuous as that or whether it is as complicated as we have a brand new ad structure that is going to add location awareness uh, and not only that, but location behavior. Uh, to the uh, to the profile of this user, and we're going to sell that information. Apple has given their own version of the "we're not an evil company, we don't do evil things to our users" policy, but we all know that's a very nice statement to make, uh, and it, 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 it's only enforced until the first time we hear about something like this being abused. So, I mean, I, I really think that we're going to start to need to have sort of terms of service reform uh, just like right now it's you your credit card company cannot give you like an 80 page terms of service without having a simple one or two page that says here's what the interest rate is here are the circumstances under which the interest rate will change and here are the terms under which we could pull your card 
Uh, I, re I really think we're nearing that point where uh, it, the first time that someone wants to sit, get out of this terms of service and they want to make the statement that no sane person is going to sit here and want and scroll through 40 pages of legalese presented in a three by five card window that has to be clicked through manually. And then a judge will say, yep, you're right. They clearly did not intend for the user to actually read all of this. And so this terms of terms of service is null and void. Yeah, I mean, 45 pages. Admittedly, it's 45 iPhone-sized pages, but it's still a lot to read. But you're not exactly. You're not going to sit there, especially on no. an iPhone, and just click, 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 click. We we do need a form of reform, even if it's a voluntary thing. Where uh, just have some sort of an IEEE ISO <laughs> certification that says, "Here is the point size. Here is the here's you, you only get two thousand. <laughs> you, you you have to here's here's the." You, I was, I was going to say, do it in the form of a tweet, but that's not going to work. But at least if it's something that I cannot get in 1K or 2K worth of space, then you just should not, you should rethink how you present this terms of service. Yeah. It's just of no use to anybody. Here's some, uh, some other uh, good news. Apple says, we, we thought this, but Apple confirms that FaceTime will not use your 3G minutes or your phone minutes. It's just Wi-Fi. That's why it's Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> Always, always pitch it as a user feature. We we don't want to inconvenience people right. by disabling their three G minutes. And so, you're welcome. We've made it Wi Fi only. What else can we do for you today? <laughs> we did it for you. You, know, you tethering is too complicated. Well, then we won't have it. That, there you go. Okay. How how many of you, when your iPhone four comes, are going to make it a FaceTime call like in the first day? <clears throat> I am. I'm gonna. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do yeah. the Mrs. Wiggins uh, sketch from <laughs> from, Hello? from the Charles Burnett show. Hello, Mrs. Wiggins. Will you come in here? Beep. I'm. How you doing? I'm doing a just. You're gonna call yourself. Well, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm calling. Don't push, don't push the call. <laughs> We're gonna call each other. <laughs> Frederick's gonna yeah. call you. I'll call. Yeah. Fre yeah. I'll be like, hi. And and by the way, Can you that see me? that will be the last time we will use FaceTime. Oh, I don't know. Year. I don't know. My 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 wife. As soon as she saw it, she was like, "Oh, I might have to get my parents an iPhone." Really? You know what I mean? Like it was like, yeah, it was like because they don't really want to use. They don't want to use Skype. Skype or iChat on the phone. I mean, on their computer, they they are phone people. And the idea of having a video phone person is a is you know having video on. And the you can phone see how well Wi-Fi works, by the way. <laughs> The first time someone someone uh, that someone FaceTimes like here is here is our new baby and he, he just learned how to say grandpa say hello to grandpa <laughs> little trial faz then as soon as as soon as that that retiree tells all their friends guess who's getting really like, forty different iPhone fours right. for Christmas okay. I really I, I really don't think it's it's like face to face conferencing I really think it's more like live video streaming like cameraman you are here and I'm I'm showing you exactly what I'm seeing right now right, right, as yeah, I walk around right. because it's I mean you're absolutely right no one wants to see you know here 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 I am holding my iPhone and you can see how badly a job I'm doing on my nose hair trimming and yeah. we'll see iPhone 4s being banned from concerts and that sort of that's thing that's right yeah nobody yeah now it's funny how many people have come up to me see have seen the Apple ads and the thing that they almost universally say is isn't it cool deaf people will be able to sign to each other Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's a big market. Well, they, they can sign to each other as it is. They're very, very good at it. I've seen it. Yeah. But now they can do it over the phone. Oh, via the phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Maybe that's the market. It's uh, it's not a huge market. I mean, I, I, that's good. I don't know. I should. I have a couple. Of, I have a couple of deaf friends. I should ask them. Yeah. I mean, part of it is well, you also have a device that like can text very, very readily. Right. Why also, not just text? Also, also the, the 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 two that I know very very well have devices that are uh, sure, attached, they, coupled to their hearing aids, so right. that it's essentially like an input. To, it's like a headset device that interfaces with the iPhone as it is. But that that, that did, during the keynote uh, presentation during WWDC, at the end of that video, it wasn't the oh look, we're, we're, here's little baby trial it wasn't fans, the baby steps throwing. It was it was like the applause came when you saw two people using ASL to communicate yep. via face chat. Yep, that was the big yep. one. Yeah. Yep. So, but don't, don't you need two two hands to do most of these signs? And oh. are are you going to be able to hold it while you're doing that? It you stands know. on its edge, though, right? You can just put it on the desk. <laughs> Not well, does it? I mean, how well? Does <laughs> yeah, it in that video, they had somebody. <laughs> you know, when, remember in the video when the girl was trying on clothes or whatever? She just set it on the counter. Yeah. Huh. Maybe that's why it's square edged. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you download iBooks 1.1? I did. PDF capability. I was able to export uh, from my email a PDF to it, and it shows up. It's kind of nice. I mean, it's yeah. my PDFs now have parity with my books at the uh, iBook from the iBooks store. 
It's now the simplest way to simply, if you have a piece of, if you have a document that you need to keep with you, like flight instructions or flight reservations, email it to yourself, give it a tap. Not only do you read it, but it also gets imported into the library and it sticks. Given that every single Macintosh can print to a PDF readily, I think this is going to be one of the most exploited features for Mac users on the iPhone. It just yeah. simply turns everything into one step. Nice. Awesome. It's really good. Let me call Alex back. Looks like he's dropped off the face of the earth. Alex is in, uh, as as we mentioned, in the convention center in San Jose and on Wi-Fi. Uh, an, an, an unnamed source close to a power plant <laughs> Yeah, where a device oh, has been God. implanted. Hey, putting manuals on there. Somebody suggested putting the 5D Mark II manual on there. That'd be cool, wouldn't it, Fred? Nope, that would be excellent. Yeah, actually, and I agree with Andy. I think it's uh, it's 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 wonderful for PDFs, the iBooks app. But I am uh, I am less than enthusiastic about other books on there in that sort well, of. Well, they don't have any books in the Gall Dern Library. That's part of the problem, right? Yeah, and the ones that they do have on there, I just uh, you know, I'm a fan of of formatting that looks really good not just a stream right. of text you right. know so so you have now in the ibooks you have uh once you add a pdf you'll have a books button that shows you the books you've purchased in the store and then you'll have a pdfs button and the pdfs are treated exactly uh, as a book would be with all the same controls i love that you yep. don't have the text enlarging capability you know you have search and you have the uh oh, let me show it here they you have search and you have the uh, brightness you have bookmarking, but you don't have, and I wish you did, the ability to change the font. I guess that's only because, you know, it has to be in the format that you could change the font. But you do have a very easy way to jump to pages. At the bottom here, you have uh, uh, thumbnails. That's, Wait, are you, are you, that's, the, that's the iPad version. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. You're, talk, I'm sorry. You're, ta you're talking about iBooks in general, not just on the iPhone. Okay. Right. Well, this is the iPad version. What is, does it look different on the iPhone? No, I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same. As you can see, I spent a lot of time stocking my iBooks shelf with content. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> I have it's four. shockingly exactly the same, <laughs> all the way books. from getting into the store. The first thing you do when you launch it is it asks, do you want us to sync up uh, all your data uh, with the store uh, uh, from, from uh, other... Well, your, that's your a new feature too, iBooks. right? Is it the synchronization feature is kind of neat. Right. So mm -hmm. not, only, not, only will you, it will, not only will it remember your place, but also if you <laughs> leave notes, bookmarks, all that sort of stuff, those also will be synced from book to book to book. But so not it's, PDFs, it's, only the books, right? Uh, not PDFs. PDFs you have to manually arrange. Uh, the, uh, the iPhone version will also, just like the iPad version, allow you to drag your own unlocked EPUBs uh, in uh, that's 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 another feature that we haven't talked about yet that doesn't get talked about as enough that uh, iPhone OS 4 has the same mechanism for application document syncing as the iPad does so now oh. uh, even so now even when you have it synced up when you have uh, iTunes uh, for your iPhone applications can if they support this feature uh, uh, you can drag your own documents into its space and can import them directly that's neat it is so, so you don't that, good, that's, good, that's, that's, that's why I say this is this is this is a lot this is iPhone, iOS 4 is turning the iPhone into very much an iPad nano mm -hmm. and uh, if you have like me if you're an iPad user who kind of said oh I don't need an iPhone anymore because I got the iPad now there is more of a compelling reason to get an iPhone and an iPad yeah. they work There's, together see, better my, my, my dream has always been like the one pocket sort of vac uh, long weekend vacation where I might have to I might have to write a few things I might have to post something to a blog where I don't even necessarily need an iPad with me all the time but all I really need is a foldable keyboard via Bluetooth and the ability to write 500 or a thousand words worth of text I would certainly not <laughs> leave the iPad at home because it's just too big and heavy for me but the ability to simply board a plane carrying nothing but the iPhone and like a pocket size one of those one of those really cool like palm style folding keyboards uh, that work via Bluetooth that really does change the iPhone. And, and again, it does change the iPhone into something you could do on a Sony Ericsson phone as of five years ago, but you w used to be stuck with Sony apps and Sony interface, and God dang it, life is too short for that sort of stuff. Yeah. Any other... Um Oh, and, the, and uh, did I say I posted a video yet, yesterday? The iPad keyboard dock works just fine with an iPhone iPhone 3GS. Oh, really? Uh, oh, that's yeah, I saw that. That was great. Yeah, that's Blue, cool. Blue, Blue, Bluetooth support is our, is is already there for for keyboards. But you know what? I had I had it on the shelf. I took it down. Said, "Gee, I wonder what happens if I plug the iPhone into this." And well, I'll be darned. It works perfectly fine, just as just as well as it does on the iPad. Uh, which led to like the next question, uh, which was. I don't if the keyboard works. I wonder if the camera connection kit works. Mm. And if the camera connection kit works, can mm -hmm. I plug in a regular USB keyboard and a microphone? Mm. Uh, and that was the time it said, 
How dare you, sir? This is not designed to work with the iPhone. Who even gave you that idea? You filthy, filthy. Oh, so they, they turned you down. It turned you it down. So the, the keyboard dock works just fine. The USB adapter uh, from the camera connection kit does oh, not work in bad. any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, now, has anybody, by the way, has anybody jailbroken iOS 4 yet? Because that's that would be one of the first things you do. Nobody it? is it's ever old. happy. You've got it for two hours and already <laughs> someone wants to jailbreak. But I want to jailbreak it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those are the people who like don't. Those are the little kids who will not eat the casserole because they just know they're not going to like it. Why okay. not just taste it first? Okay. Maybe Apple solved every problem you had. All right. Never mind. <laughs> well, I know that that's what I mean. That's what I'm planning to do with my old phone. Is I'm gonna I'm finally gonna I'm gonna jailbreak it. Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I just. I'm, I'm missing the the opportunity of playing with all those. Well, that's a good tools. reason. Yeah, I wouldn't do it on my main phone, but I think that's a good reason to right. keep that old phone. Yeah. What do you want to install on there, Alex? What are you, What are you missing? Uh, you know, I just want to, just want to see what's there. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't know. Well, there's, I have a fr a friend of mine, Hanif and uh, Abdul Rizal in, in in Tanzania. He has this one. I don't know why I think it's so cool, but he just shakes and it just answers. Like if it's ringing, he just picks it up and he just goes, and it just answers the phone and i don't know why i think that that's great but i'm like i just want to have the opportunity but for the ipad i know for me it's being able to capture the screen you know because we want to do stuff where we show right. the ipad screen and so being able to uh you know uh jailbreak the iphone i think both of them you can do it with the ipad right. or the iphone once you I've jailbreak it and stupid that apple won't let us have that because they have it yeah, that's something we're, we're dealing with on uh, launching our iPad Today show. I think we're just going to shoot the screen with a finger, big fat finger running around on it because we can't. I mean, we have a way. Don McAllister's figured out a way to get all of it out of our VGA, but then you don't see your finger. And, right. I don't know. Hey, an alert if you are a Steam user, which I am, and uh, I'm going to talk about Steam in a little bit, but um, Apple's uh, update to Steam, the 10 point, or actually Apple's update to OS 10, the 10.64 update has, according to Steam, noticeable performance issues for NVIDIA graphic chips owners running high performance games. So don't update if you're a Steam user and you're playing the uh, big 3D games on Steam. Uh, if you have already installed the update and believe your graphic performance is affected, says Steam, please contact Apple. <laughs> <laughs> we have no fix for you. Maybe maybe if you bitch to Apple, they'll fix it. They they what they sounds like they did is they put in a driver, a sub substandard driver, subpar driver, and they need to get a better better driver in there. Uh, more information uh, on the update at ht4150 at support.apple.com. So let us get our picks of the week in just a second. Are you ready, fellas? Yes. 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 Frederick Van Johnson is here, the photographer. You'll find him at MediaBytes.com. Always great to have you on. He also is the host of This Week in Photography, which is seen Mondays on the Twit live stream. I am. Good to have you. Andy Anako from the Celestial Waste of Bandwidth in Chicago Sun-Times. And our good friend Alex Lindsay of the Pixel Core. Before we continue, I want to mention our friends at Squarespace.com. I know Alex is a big Squarespace fan. We're all Squarespace fans. Our, our company blog is on Squarespace. I'm moving uh, my radio show website over to Squarespace. It's just a better way to uh, host and uh, and and use a website. So it's it's both hosting and the software. It's the secret behind exceptional websites. That's that's what it is. And you can try it right now, absolutely free with no credit card by going to squarespace.com/macbreak. If you decide to buy after your two-week trial, you get 10% off for life. If you use the coupon code MacBreak, so I want to recommend it. Why use it? Well, everything from beautiful templates that are completely customizable. And if you, I mean, to the point where if you're a CSS jockey, you can really make it look like anything. JavaScript too. Seamless Im importing from your movable type, your WordPress, your TypePad or Blogger blog, if you already have an existing blog. The iPhone app is spectacular. I expect an iPad app any day now. It's great stats, beautiful photo galleries. And if you just want an idea of what you could do with Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak and click the examples link and you'll see some amazing Squarespace sites. There's Clayton's site, ClaytonMorris.com. Actually, it's called the, it's called the, no, I guess it's ClaytonMorris.com. Yeah, there it is. Um, if you want to know more, go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak, sign up for your free trial, 15 days free, and remember, 10% off 
if you use the coupon code MACBREAK. They really do a nice job. And you uh, you know, unlimited bandwidth. Well, it's not, I shouldn't say unlimited bandwidth, but if, if you get hit by the slash dot thing, by the dig thing, you don't have to worry. They just Their virtual server technology means they just got bandwidth to spare. You know, my, my thing is I just want to focus on the content. I don't want right. to figure out how to code it. I don't want right. to know. I don't right. want to know. I don't want to know. Starts at $8 a month for the basic version. If you want to do the big community package for large projects, not just $50 a month. You get a custom URL, 5 gigabytes storage, 400 gigabytes a month bandwidth, six custom audiences, unlimited members, unlimited editors. The custom audience thing is kind of intriguing. You should, if you want to know more about that, you should go to the site. It's, you can have groups of members within your site, each with different access levels, different modules, different permissions. So there's a public audience, but then there are additional. You can have up to up to six additional audiences, which is really an interesting slice. Really powerful. That's what we'll do for the radio show, by the way. Squarespace.com slash MacBreak. We thank them for their support of MacBreak Weekly. Frederick Van Johnson. Yes. Mediabytes.com. What is your pick of the week? Um, well, you know, I've got, I've got two small ones. So the first one is uh, Sonos. So you're familiar with Sonos? They make those controllers where you can uh, stream uh, your music uh, throughout the house? I have uh, zone players in three rooms, bedroom, living room, and kitchen. I use Leo. the iPhone app. It is awesome. Well, Leo, you will be happy to know that they're coming out with a free, if it's not available today, I think it may be available today, iPad app. I thought they said yeah. August. Is it soon? Is it really? Um, I think it's today. Because I've been using the iPhone app on it, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is okay, but it could be better. Yep. So that's my that's my pick. I'm gonna. Awesome. You know, I think I'm gonna switch over to Sonos. So I've been using uh, just airport expresses around the house, sure. you know, and streaming music to those. But there's no feedback from the you know the different zones. So I want to. Uh, I think I want to upgrade the experience and go with the Sonos. I am. That's you know, expensive. I think it's three ninety nine a unit. But the sound yeah. quality is superb. Yeah. Um, yeah. You get. Um, you know. You have the ability to. Um, have them all bound together or each one separately. Mm -hmm. You can play radio, you know, all the internet radio features you'd want. Yeah, it's not in the store yet. I'm, boy, I'm excited because I've been waiting for them to do this upgrade. This is one of the one of the programs I've been... But, you know, it, you can use it on the iPad. It's just, it's that big iPhone interface, Yeah, you know? Yeah, there's an article about it on Engadget right now. So, uh, yeah, check it out over awesome. there. Awesome. Good pick. Um, and uh, my second one is you guys, you know, you probably know about this app already, but I just discovered it on my iPad called Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R. -E 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 um, it's on the iPhone and the iPad. There's an iPad Google Reader version and kind of pulls in your, your Google feed. But it, I got to say, the iPad version has got to be one of the best designed iPad applications I've experienced so far. Is it, The fit and finish and the attention to detail is insane yeah there it is i love that i love app. the folders it really is slick and it's fast which a lot of these readers are not yeah um the only thing i don't like about reader is its delicious support is not doesn't isn't full support it doesn't do oauth so i can't uh, yet i any day now mm -hmm. i'll be able everything's to, any day now <laughs> any day now i'll be able to uh to delicious tag these but it's re yeah they did a nice job jimmy kimmel's macbook saves the day after power outage Jimmy decided to film tonight's entire episode using his MacBook's webcam. <laughs> what? Uh, that might, that might have been a stunt. He does those sometimes. Uh, yeah. I mean, come on. They say that the power went on in the set. That's hard to believe that they didn't have uh, <laughs> any other way to shoot it. They didn't show the whole show on the uh, MacBook, did they? See, if he had an iPhone 4, he could have filmed the whole episode in HD. Wouldn't that be funny? And edited it. And uh, edited it. <laughs> it's, on, it's on his Facebook page. That's what it is. Anyway, yes, I agree with you. Reader, what a great application. R-E-E-D-E-R. -E -E really a nice, a nice uh, news reader for the Mac. And yeah, I have it synced up with my Google uh, reader. Very nice. Thank you, Frederick. You're welcome. A good pick. And now, Andy Anotko. Andy Anotko. Uh, I have kind of a quick one. Um... Uh, Huda Soft, Software makes a couple of tools that we're all kind of big fans of. Oh yeah! Uh, recently, I started using Huda Spot, H O U D A H Spot, hmm. uh, which is not the prettiest app ever made, 
but it's, it's designed to be really, really functional. What it is, is it's a graphical front end to Spotlight because Spotlight can do all kinds of really complicated queries that are really more designed for programmers to access than for users to simply type out like a simple search query. Oh. This makes it very, very easy, especially if you have, like me, you've got tens of thousands of files on huge hard drives to say, please give me every file that was created within the past three days, but not within the past two days that contains this sort of information, not exactly matching, but sort of fuzzy matching, but not if it's been modified by this application, but definitely if it's been accessed by this application. Uh, and then we'll give you a list that you can then just simply pass over to the finder uh, for either archiving or deleting or whatever it is you want to do, or just simply tagging uh, for later use. Uh, if Because there, there are times when you just wish that you had someone cleverer than you that you could simply dictate a, t a list to, saying, uh, "Well, well, Saul, I, I know that I know that you're my you're the intern, and I'm supposed to give these horrible jobs to you, but I need you to collect every single file that was in any way related to this book that I wrote two years ago, and it's spread over four different hard drives and three di 80 different types of files. But there is a way to describe it so that you can just do it with one or two queries. It's hard to do strictly via Spotlight. It's actually very easy to do via Huda Spot." Uh, you can also save these queries so that if you manage to build something kind of complex so that it will automatically organize everything that's supposed to be on your server, like all of your CSS files that are related to a specific project that use this special JavaScript tag that you cooked up just for this project, you can simply save it as a query so that every time you wanted to retidy that, uh, Hootaspot can find it for you again. If I had one uh, one really big suggestion, I really wish it could work as sort of a compiler for these spotlight queries so that I could then mm -hmm, save one of these mm -hmm. really complicated, nicely formatted graphical searches as then a smart folder so that I don't necessarily have to launch a Huda spot all the time. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing that sort of separates it from it. It's, it's, a, 30, it's, it's a free trial. Uh, it's $30 if you want to keep it. If it had that sort of ability to save a query from who to spot as a smart folder it would definitely be worth the 30 bucks for everybody as it is it's for people i think it's a really really great tool for people who need to manage again these tens or hundreds of thousands of files in a million different places where you just find yourself crawling through folder after folder directory after directory doing multiple search after multiple search to do something that you know spotlight could do if you just were smart enough to know how to write that little bit that that like 10 lines of apple script or the, that little bit of xcode that could simply serve this this stuff for you so good stuff. Uh, it'll, it'll be it'll be a handy thing to have in your back pocket for that one time that you really want to go to to the concert, but you've got eight hours worth of searches to do in the next twenty minutes. That looks great. Huda spot. They, he does great stuff. Huda. Who yeah, dat? It's it's it's, it's it, he has his own aesthetic and his own goals, and that's why you like to see the small developers right. each pursuing their own exactly. first, their own, their own specific form of dementia. Right. <laughs> that's exactly right. And that, that's kind of why a closed app store is such a bad idea, you know, because Apple will say, oh, no, that doesn't fit our, uh, our, you know, uh, idiom. idiom. And, uh, and you, you lose out on a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week. I would like to say that if Fred had just stuck with one, this would have been a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, above uh -oh. and beyond. Did he steal your pick? Well, we ran into... I guess we ran into a friend of the guy who actually develops Reader in at Twit Cottage. He was sitting. That's I, right. I ran into him when he was. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so I said, oh, I'll give it a shot. And so I went and bought it. And, it's awesome, uh, isn't it? And just love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, I, I, so, I, want, I want to say one thing, though, because right? I didn't want to in, interrupt Frederick. Uh, it has one feature that it desperately needs, and that's the reason why I don't—I own it, but I don't use it. It needs a button with a question mark to explain what all these really cool, you know, Scandinavian design icons do. Yeah, because they're, yeah. they're oh, over on the icons. left. There. That's yeah. part of the fun, know. though, Andy. It's discovery. Not, not, you know? not, not only that, but they're but they're too small. I mean, there's I, I don't have unfortunately I don't have my iPad where I'm I've actually switched over to another RSS reader that it does not try to be really really impressive with this design. It's just very very functional. The buttons are really really big. You can easily just hold your iPad horizontally with two hands and navigate it that way. I don't have to sort of saying, oh boy, isn't it great that they decided to put this tiny little button up in the corner because it looks so cool? But I'll, maybe if I can hit it with my pinky. There there you go. Nope, didn't get. Oh, there you go. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now I'm looking at oh, new, Andy. New mail. Andy. Andy. See, it's very simple. There's a star yeah. that no, shows your you, your starred stuff. Is that's the star. There's a uh -huh. dot that shows 
unread feeds in uh, you know they're all folder that is universal for unread feeds it yeah. is actually and, and then having all these and having all these pages in a grid is much much makes much much better sense than having a list you can simply scroll because look at all the information it's giving you oh well, my god let's what say information i want is delivering unread all the form and the unconformed with a tiny title <laughs> at the bottom thank god they do here's they unread tech news i press tech news i have the unread button these are unread stories in the tech news category if i want to read them i tap them list because i don't care about blank sheets of paper. I want to know what the name of this thing is. Has it been updated recently? But uh, I, I, you're next, right. Next it week, is a little obscure. My favorite obscure. RSS reader is going to be my pick of the week. I need to. I need to explain that. I don't think it's a terrible product. It's just that this is the sort of thing where the, it, the the developer thinks it's finished. He shows it to five friends. The five friends tell him that. I, I want to like it, but I can't really use it. And then he makes a bunch of simple changes that make it into a really great product. I, I will grant you that. There is, to me, there is as yet no perfect RSS reader. The one that I, I do use all the time, News Rack, is way slow. And I, maybe it's because I have millions of feeds. I don't know. But uh, I want something that's fast and I can bookmark to delicious in. And that's, that's all I ask. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your pick next week. Okay. And as for I mean, you, Alex Lindsay... So, so I have another one though. This is for the iPad, and so, so here we have the. Uh, this is. Uh, let's see where the screen. Oh, three, so two, this one. Is, oh, A see, teleprompter. Oh, look at that! Free at last. Free at last. Oh yeah, my God, and so, I need that. so th this is called uh, Teleprompt Plus, and uh, one of the cool things about this is that it will actually, uh, you can actually control it with your iPhone. So you can connect it via Wi-Fi to your iPhone so that you can use your iPhone to actually progress the text up. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's a cool little app. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, teleprompters can be very expensive. If you already have an iPad and you're on the road, being able to just throw one of these, uh, you know, and there, there, there's a couple people who make, are now making teleprompters that, uh, uh, that, that you can slide your iPad into. And uh, we're actually going to show on GMT on GMT part of, or actually part of a new new show that we're working on. We're going to show you how to build one. You know how to build a little teleprompter around your iPad. So uh, so I really started getting trying to figure out what was out there, and this is the best one that I found so far. So it's called Teleprompt Pro, and I think it's like five bucks. It's 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 really inexpensive. It's it's amazing between stuff like Movie Slate, which we talked about last week, Teleprompt uh, from the film business, from the TV business. It's amazing what. Uh, uh, all these things that were really expensive before and really a, a pain in the neck to buy and, and deal with are just you know all finding their way onto the iPad. Somebody, I think it, uh, somebody sent me an email. There was a, I think it was a Dutch uh, legislator in Parliament who read his speech from an iPad and is now being censured for bringing the technology into the hallowed halls of the Parliament. Uh, off with his head. Off with his head. They're investigating. Well, should we allow? But but what a great. Uh, thing for a speech you have your own prompter you put it here you press go it's got big characters and you read your Love speech that. well and the thing is is that because it's scrollable you can you can set it down you can be reading it and so if you're even if you're not going to use it as a teleprompter if you're just going to use it as your your, your text talk, yeah. how many times are you sitting there fiddling around with your news with your paper you know like mm -hmm. you're oh i got to go to page three or i got to go to page four now you simply just take your finger and you're looking down and reading and then you just scroll your finger up and move it to the move it to the next round of text. It is, you know, even if you're not going to use it for a teleprompter as just something if you're going to do a speech or talks or whatever, it's just the perfect little application for five bucks. We'll change and podcasting once with. a front facing camera hits the, the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> I, I don't like teleprompters. I hate teleprompters. I won't allow teleprompters in my studio because it makes somebody dead. But there are times when you're working like Alex does with executives who have to read copy. That is the only choice. It's the only option. Um, but podcasters, beware! It'll kill. It'll kill your spontaneity, your reality. Do not use a teleprompter. Unless well, he's got to know how to read. Come on. Well, I like. To, I know I, how to I read a to teleprompter my... after many, many years of doing it, and I can make it look like I'm not reading a teleprompter. But most people flat affect the minute they put a prompter. Well, I, I, yeah. if, if, if I use a teleprompter, what I really want are just notes. You know, I don't want to. I don't want the words that I have to read. What I'm really looking for are. You know, just the things to remember that I had to say, especially if I'm going through something technical. You know, I, without I, looking I down, right? Talking to yeah, without looking down, I can just look up there, and the notes are there. This is the next step of, of the training tutorial, or this is the next whatever, and, and I just know which ones to hit next. Uh, that's the only time I, I, mean, I don't like, I don't like it to tell me every word because I make that up on my own. But Alex, it really does sound as though, like bit by bit, 
uh, TV production and video production and film production apps are coming onto the iPad. First, you have the $10,000 clapperboard now as a $40 app. Now you have what's probably a really expensive teleprompter infrastructure as an iPad app. Like I, I'm, I've, uh, other guys who are in uh, lighting and other and other services have told me that now they're using iPads as the controllers for their soundboards and their lighting boards. Yeah, it's, it's like going to be. If, every... if you have an iPad strapped to your back, you can actually run Hollywood now. Yeah. Well, and 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 and, we're, and they haven't really done what's going to what I think is really going to make this exciting is when you start to cloud source all of these applications together because. Right now, you have a whole bunch of people writing down on pieces of paper, you know, what the camera settings were and what the sound notes are and, and what the script notes are and everything else. And, and when you centralize all of that, uh, it's going to make a massive difference because you can have that all in a cloud where the script supervisor changes the, the, the shot name and it changes everywhere. And the script, you know, script supervisor, you know, and, and as everyone puts the notes in, they're all coming into a central location. All of those things are, the, are, are you know, are the next step. There's a lot of people talking about doing those things. Uh, uh, and so we're going to see this this kind of integration between all of these different departments, and it's it's, it's going to make a massive difference. And it's going to be like for five ninety nine and twenty dollars, and you know, it, 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 stuff that ah, it's, just, it's, it's exciting. That's all I got to say. <laughs> it is it is a seat change, but don't yeah. use a prompter, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from the old timer; <laughs> they'll kill you. Drink, all right, my drunk, pick. Smoke pot, whatever you have to. Smoke just all the, the pot, prompter. drink all so you want. Just don't use a teleprompter. Exactly. Do what I do. Drop acid daily. No, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. So Is that I. Admission of guilt? <laughs> no, 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 no. I've seen some of the finest minds of my generation destroyed by teleprompter use. That's exactly right. Allen Ginsberg. Many people I, didn't know that he was, in fact, a regular on. Uh, PBS in San Francisco. All I all I have to say is that is that if you have to shoot executives, uh, you know that, that I know. Not you need it. No, you work, need it. You got to put you, you got to put that in front of them, or you'll be there all day to get oh yeah a minute and a half. Oh yeah. I don't know, guys. One of my most one of my favorite podcasts and one of the most entertaining podcasts that I listen to is Mac OS Ken, and his is scripted, and it sounds great, and I'm happy he scripts it. So you know. There's room for reading, I think. You know, it's not a, a hard and fast rule that you have to read, but I like I like some things that have structure. I will acknowledge that, like, if I script pre-scripted and edited everything I was about to say during every podcast, my contributions would be about six minutes, ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly why we ask you not to write it down. <laughs> my pick of the week is for gamers. I've got two of them. First of all, I should it would I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Electronic Arts is having a ninety nine cent sale on its iPhone applications, and they do a lot of great games, over a dozen titles. It's only for 48 hours. So this is Command & Conquer, FIFA 10, Madden NFL, Need for Speed Shift, Need for Speed Undercover, SimCity, Dragon's Lair, Jewel Quest, Trivial Pursuit, all 99 cents for the first time. Others that they have done this before with, but are 99 cents for the next uh, 48 hours. NBA Live, Tiger Woods, Battleship Connect 4, Surviving High School. The Game of Life, Clue, and Yahtzee. So that's a that's a pretty good deal. Ninety nine cents for the next forty eight hours. I checked, not on the iPad. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> oh, there goes Alex. Ah, screw him. Uh, and then okay. <laughs> wait a minute, we're done with him. He was he he was he's over. I'll give him a plug think later. It, think it's an opportunity for the, other, the rest of those, us three to look better now. Yes, that's right. Now that the person who knows things and speaks with authority is gone. <laughs> we <laughs> shall see, what's the wrong with Hollywood, Redrick and Leo, is that the <laughs> I think his prompter went down. Changed, but the red cameras <laughs> and the 412p I interlaced Genlock <laughs> time code system, I think is going to... It's going to have an effect. That's uh, Mind you me. And if Alice disagrees, he should say something. Nope. See, so. you're absolutely right. My other pick, I don't know if we've picked this before, but it's just getting better and better and better. Steam on the Mac. We talked about it earlier at the uh, update issue with the uh, graphics, the faulty graphics driver that Apple was putting out. But if you have a Macintosh, a late model Macintosh, even if you don't, because some of the Steam games are uh, absolutely uh, for uh, less powerful systems, Steam has always been a stalwart on the PC side. Um, the best way to buy games for Windows machines and uh, they put it out for the Mac about a, a month ago. And now they have really great titles like Team Fortress 2, Half-Life 2 available. In fact, there are hundreds of titles now out. 
Civilization 4 that are equivalent to the PC version. In fact, you can play, when you play Team Fortress 2, you can play Windows users at parity. They've got EVE Online. I've been playing uh, Portal 2, which they were giving away for a while. Uh, this, If you're a gamer at all, uh, this is a really great choice, especially if you have a later late model Mac. I've been playing on my um, my current Mac laptop, the PowerBook that I just got, uh, with that new NVIDIA, was it a 320? And uh, plenty of horsepower to play all of these games. They've just done a great job. If you haven't played Half-Life 2, it's, a, it's one of the best games out there. And uh, fairly affordable. You download it uh, when you buy it on any Steam platform, you get to keep it on all Steam platforms. So if you're cross-platform or you have multiple Macs, um, it's a great way to buy a game. And they have frequent sales on the weekends. You should always check the prices. They're always, much like Electronic Arts, they're changing the prices all the time. A huge selection now. 99 games for Macintosh. Thank you, Valve, for giving uh, the Macintosh parody uh, in, in this terms of gaming. I think they've really brought, they've, met, they've actually single-handedly made the Mac a, a, a strong gaming platform all of a sudden. So that's my pick of the week. It's free to get. Steam for the Mac. Steampowered.com. Alex Lindsay is not with us. He has passed on to the great Skype in the sky. <laughs> but if he were here, I'm sure he would say, make sure you go to pixelcore.tv for all the great podcasts. I got to call him back. I can't, I can't do this. One of the hostages must have overpowered him. I can't. Yeah, really. Spent too much, he must have spent too much time on his to camera manifesto. Uh, if you put that on the prompter instead of rambling on like that, he wouldn't have been overpowered. Exactly. exactly. You see that? If he it on his own petard. We're just, we're just wrapping up, Alex. I just wanted to give you a, a, a chance to plug anything you need at pixelcore.tv for the podcast, pixelcore.com. Oh, he can't, he, we can't get him on. I guess he's lost it. Actually, the timing was perfect. Pixelcore.com if you want to find out more about his Guild of Multimedia Artists. Frederick Van Johnson, professional Hello. photographer, is I am. at MediaBytes.com. Anything else you'd like to plug this week in photography? Uh, this week in photography, um, you know what? We've been, we've been remiss in having a Twitter account for this week in photography, but it is now active. So uh, you can check out that Twitter feed or friend us. Be like the, what is the Twitter the feed? Wait, what, what is the Twitter feed? It is this week in photo. On Twitter, this week in photo. All right. So, friend us there, and uh, or friend me at Frederick Van. I'm gonna follow you. There you go. Now following this week in photo, and of course I've been following Frederick Van for a long time. F R E D E R I C K V A N. Watch me be proven a liar. Am I following? Yes, I am. Look at that. There I am. Woo! I was close. I took a chance. MediaBytes.com. Andy Anatko is the man at the Chicago Sun Times. His re great reviews are just, you know, definitive and uh, unteleprompted. <laughs> you can also read his blog at www.cwob.com. And uh, when are we going to see that iPhone 4 review in the Chicago Sun Times? Uh, I have right now, right, right now on, on the on the on the the, the lathe, I've got three different pieces, <laughs> and they're going to be coming out starting Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday regarding uh, regarding iOS four and the iPhone four. So may God have mercy upon my poor editor's souls. They're going to be doing a lot of <laughs> eight thousand words coming in over the transom, and this is his, uh, by the way, <laughs> video. I love your shot there, your opening shot. His video of how the keyboard dock works. With the iPhone 3GS, that's also there at www.cwob.com. Andy Anatko, beloved technology pundit. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. We do this show every Tuesday morning, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. You can watch live at live.twit.tv. Or subscribe at twit.tv slash mbw. You can subscribe on iTunes and get it automatically. We have... Audio and two video versions, a big one and a little one, depending on your advice. Uh, we also have uh, a YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash twit. You'll find the Mac Break Weekly channel. And so there's plenty of ways to get your Mac Break Weekly. And I am told, any day now, we're going to stream live on the Roku box and all the Mediafly platforms. You can also subscribe to us via Mediafly. You'll find the podcast and soon the live streaming. And that'll put us on a bunch of devices, which is very exciting. Um, I think that's all I have to say. If you like Mac Break Weekly, don't forget to watch Windows Weekly Thursdays at the same time and get the other side of the equation with Paul Thorat. And we do a great show on Wednesdays at this time all about Google.
So we like to cover, you know, Mac. These are the three big platforms, Mac, Windows, and the cloud. And you'll find it all here at live.twit.tv. Thanks for joining us. Get back to work now. Great time is over.